And then you talked about cultivating contentment. Sure. When I brought up, hey, can you help them make more money? And so I can actually see how if you can truly authentically help a person cultivate more contentment, mm -hmm. which God knows John and I need, <laughs> yep. um, that will actually, as a more content person, probably help me make more money in other parts of my life. Completely. It's not about not dreaming big. Like we have clients with very high incomes that are out to do some really amazing things. But like Carlos Gosen, he wasn't content and he kept chasing something yeah. that had him start to develop some different behaviors, like yeah. do some things that ruined Steal it some all. Shit. Yeah. So like the first question we'll ask some clients is like, what do you want? What are you after? Where where do you want this to to end? Because that really dictates the lengths to which they need to go and the choices they need to to make. I had a client looking at buying a big or building another building for themselves and be able to expand and have all these opportunities. Uh, uh, wait, from from a business perspective, they build another building. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They own a successful business already, and they had an opportunity to stop renting a facility, build one instead. And and I said, well you're feeling kind of stressed out. And I think it's because you feel like you're serving this project. The project isn't serving you. Yeah. So like the project you, is driving your life. Yeah. So just, let's just get clear on why you're doing it. And, and, and the reason why they're doing it is to create more opportunity. And they needed to come back to that. It's a little bit of a life coachy kind of, kind of. And approach. I hate those words, but sure. You know, like, cause when I hear life coach, uh, like to me, that means someone who lives in their parents' basement and is trying to tell me how to live my, my life. There are some great life coaches out there, but it's just like everyone has a podcast nowadays, like you and yeah. me both, but you know, everyone could be a life coach. There are some great coaches. I've had, I have multiple coaches and have worked with multiple coaches over time. Uh, just the life coaching. I'm with you. Like, I'm like, oh, I, I, I get that. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm the same way as you, whether it's a financial coach or a, a career coach or other, I have a spiritual coach, you yeah. know, a spiritual guide. Th those are all really important things. I mean, I, I, I value those and I benefit from those. And I hear you on the life coach thing. How is a negative energy to it? But I mean, but what I'm saying is like, you're indirectly helping people make more money by almost like putting them on the spot a little bit and being like, you know, help me understand what you're after here. And I will help you think about it financially right. more wisely. Um, and maybe set your goal or reset your goal so that it, it it's more in line um, with life happiness. Well, because it's not about making more money. It's about making the right amount of money in the right way. I think most people would disagree with you on that. So, well, here's, here's what I mean. I have clients who are recently retired and they, they actually, with the different things they put together, they have got plenty of income. They're actually still saving money. Like they're still adding money to their balance sheet as retirees. From what? Social security? Oh, like their pension or? and social security yeah. is more than they need to live Investment off Investment income? Well, like they just, they have all these, these income streams that are more than they need, more than they're spending. So they can just keep adding more. So it's a nice, that's an inflation hedge to beat all inflation hedges, yeah, right? Yeah. So they have some extra money and we're talking about risk and how much, and, and so they don't want to earn the maximum amount of money they can on that money because they're already satisfied. Right. They don't, so it could go either way. Someone in the same situation could say, well, since I don't need the money, let's let it ride. Let's like, they Take might go risk. that way. Let's buy a whole bunch of Facebook. Right. But these clients, they kind of think of it like, earning the right to be conservative. They're like, we don't need to ride that wave. Right. We don't need- Why be under all that stress? Why be under all that, that stress? Because it would be stressful to them. So that's what I mean about, it's not just making more, it's making the right amount. Because if you already have everything you need, then do you want to risk it? Hmm. Some people do, some people don't. But see, that's where we're finding that right equation for each client. So here's, here's a thought that, that's triggering in my mind. Um, I've been going through this debate in my mind. So I was quite conservative mm -hmm. with money in my 20s. I worked at JP Morgan, mm -hmm. had some good years, had some pretty strong bonuses, saved it up, invested it, all right, and felt I had a very strong personal balance sheet. I was like, yo, I've got a lot of savings. I'm going to take some risk with my life, change my career up. I did. I'm now in the world of entertainment. Yeah. Um, then I got married and had two kids, <laughs> and I just started spending those savings like it was – going out of style. I'm doing that right now as we speak. And it freaks me out each month as I sell sure. stocks and 
and go down, fund down, my life. Down, down. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, well, it sucks that it's going down, down, down. And that's stressing me out. But at the same time, I love that I'm supporting my family and we're living off of it. That's a beautiful thing that you ha- you have the resource to do it. It's there. Like it's doing its job. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm not fully content. The fact that it's going down, I'm not mm-hmm. making income right now. I'm trying to figure out that part. I'm like stressed about it. But the truth is when I was building up and had my strong ass balance sheet, my fucking, my life was a mess too. My personal, <laughs> personal life. So I was like, am I, I think I'm setting up my life in a way for no contentment by relying on my balance sheet for contentment. Mm-hmm. It seems that's what is happening with me. And so my, I guess my, my, I think of all that when you're speaking because I'm like, you know, man, Corey, could you really help me find contentment? You know, like, could I really figure that out? Wouldn't a lot of people agree with me that like, yo, fine, I don't have savings, but the 50 grand or 100 grand I make a year, I spend it on me and my family. That's, that's great. What do you want me to do? Like, I'm, yeah, it sucks. I don't have savings for a rainy day. I'm not building an investment portfolio, but hey, this is life. I might die tomorrow, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I think I'm content. Well, I'm not, I can't give anyone any goals that they don't already have. And that's certainly a way to live life, but reality will call their bluff. And what I mean is they might be content now, but if they're not, like we all will face a winter of our lives where whether we want to or not, we won't be able to earn the income that we want. I'm in it right now, brother. <laughs> well, and you Winter I mean, is not coming winter, in Game of Thrones here, baby. It's maybe. here winter now. Winter is here. Well, I'm in season eight. Like the salesperson, the guy who's in sales and says, like, I love my job. I'm going to do it till I'm 70. I don't care. I don't need to retire. And I say, well, look around and are there, do you see a lot of people who are 70 doing what you're doing? Software? Yeah, yeah, right. The answer is no. So the marketplace makes a choice and does not value their offer <laughs> as uh, much anymore. That's the winter of our lives that I mean. Meaning so that, like when you get into your 60s and 70s, you're saying like, you're you might saying have a like choice. People, <laughs> you may not be able to get hired because you're, Correct. you're obsolete as a human being. <laughs> in, in whatever job you were in, they're going to. Like you're not Damn. absolutely a human being. Like no, you're very bad, right? But you're in that in that market. At some level. At some level. And so that person who's saying, oh, I'm making what buck fifty, I'm not saving any of it, but I'm living a good life. Well, for how long? That's what that like they won't have a choice to continue that. So you have short term contentment. Short term contentment. But but so yeah, we need to distinguish now short term contentment from more mm. a deeper, longer term contentment. Right. Mm. Well think of you know the the doomsday prepper folks that are like oh oh yeah, yeah right yeah. You're, i got my cave out in Montana. Yeah, i've got be off 70, 70 cans of tuna down there and yeah. gas masks and shit they're you know i don't know how much money they're actually saving too they're but probably all they flat spend. earthers too <laughs> they probably are flat <laughs> yeah that's right i can't see past the right it's just all flat. <laughs> uh they're they seem like they're spending all of their money getting ready for this thing that has like a one tenth of a tenth of a tenth percent chance of happening yet like if they're 40 and healthy, they've got, I don't know, nearly a hundred percent chance of living till they're 65. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to have to replace their income at some point. They're not prepping for that. Right. I see what you're saying. But it's coming. Right. Like, right whether right. you want it or not. So that's what I mean. Reality is going to long term contentment. Their bluff. Yeah, I got you. Okay. And so what you're saying is given how you're set up, you're not focusing hundred percent of your energy on, oh, let's buy this stock and let's sell this bond and let's no. You're actually spending much less time on that. You're spending more time on communicating with the client about their goals, mm-hmm. how they can achieve those goals, what's in their way, um, about contentment, what's legit contentment, authentic contentment, false contentment. Are they thinking about, hey, is reality going to call your bluff? It sounds to me like, yeah, you're 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 more you're more you're bringing in other dimensions that I would guess a lot of financial advisors don't. That that then make the process of figuring out what kind of mix of stocks and bonds they should buy that much more valuable yeah. and effective for more accurate when we right. get there. Right, right, right. So, mm. and you know, these are all really important things that I don't want to step over the fact that we do some great academic based work in helping folks create the kind of portfolio that needs to be there for them if we get to that point. But there's a lot of other help that is missing first to make that really, really worthwhile.